Everyone's curious about your, what is it, 42 pound cabbage? Well, it was 42 pounds this morning when it was wet and all the leaves were on it, but we'll say it's 40. So what do you do with these cabbages? They go into sauerkraut production and Pleasant Valley Farms is the local produce producer up there that makes this sauerkraut. It's some secret European recipe and been judged very good stuff. We have uh, about 55 acres of cabbage for kraut. We, uh, my brothers and I have 30 and another guy has 20. Doesn't add up to 55, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, your other, your other farming enterprise is growing spinach seed and I don't know, other vegetable seed as well or primarily spinach? Be beets and spinach. And we used to grow cabbage seed, but we don't grow cabbage seed anymore for various reasons. But uh, I represent the seed industry up there, and we're, we're in competition with New Zealand and Europe and South Africa and South America. And, you know, certain things are in our favor, like a weak dollar helps us. But uh, the ease of producing these things cheaply because of cheap labor is killing us. But we still always will have a niche, I believe, because we have the best quality in the world. And so, where you got this baby leaf spinach down there in California, if they don't poison it, there's millions of plants per acre, and they all got to come up at the same time. So the best quality seed is the only thing that'll do for that, and we we do that. You told me uh, in an earlier conversation that disease is one of your big challenges and that Lindsay Dutoy is a very big help in uh, she's your fab, industry. She, she's uh, fabulous at what she does. The point of this booth is is uh, our fight against uh, no registration for minor crops and chemicals because it just doesn't pay and the weeds are getting tougher and the materials to fight them with are getting fewer and uh, we're, we're now in a potato boom in Skagit County and that means verticillium and that's deadly enemy of spinach and it's a battle. And, and, and I've been doing it for 40 years, I'm not gonna quit. And, and Lindsay's helping with the fight, I assume. Very much, very much. She uh, is responsive to growers' needs. She uh, works 24 hours a day, it seems, you know. She's really diligent. She has her field day and her trials, and she publishes all the stuff that we need to know. She writes letters on our behalf to the, to the chemical companies to try to keep them fired up to keep these things going. And uh, there's uh, Tim is the, is the uh, weed man up there. Tim Miller. Tim Miller is the weed man up there, and he, he works hard. We have a, we have a great team at Mount Vernon. So you think it's a good partnership? It's a great partnership and it's it's I've been around there a lifetime and it's the best it's ever been and we we certainly are happy about the new building and the new facilities because that gets high-class scientists that want to work there compared to the old I mean you know you can only do so much with what you got but we're very appreciative of how it turned out I give, I give another hand to Debbie Inglis, Dr. Debbie Inglis. Uh, I don't know if she's in charge temporarily or permanently, but she's in charge, and she got that thing built practically single-handedly. So I give her high marks. Thank you, Kirby. You're welcome. Kirby was telling us you're a big benefit to the seed industry. Um, what, how do you view your work and working with the seed industry? Well, I, I consider working with the seed industry a wonderful opportunity. And um, I think a, for, as a researcher, it's a really dynamic situation because the seed growers are some of the most progressive growers because of the high value but also high risk of their crops. And the seed companies wouldn't partner with growers that weren't good growers and progressive growers. So I'm very fortunate as a researcher to work with growers like Kirby who are very responsive to research, recognize the value of research, and contribute to our research in, in many, many ways. So I, I see it as a very much a two-way street, a synergistic interaction.
And it sounds like very challenging work too. Kirby was talking about the uh, the challenges of being a seed grower. Uh, uh, there's a lot of challenge. A lot of these crops are on the ground for 12 to 14 months, even longer sometimes. And, and there's a long period of risk, um, a lot of time for exposure to diseases. And so pathology becomes an, a critical aspect of seed production for the quality that is demanded by the, the uh, people who are buying the seed from these growers. I don't think a lot of people understand how big the seed industry is in our state. Uh, how big is it? The seed industry is very big. and. Uh, um, if you, I don't know how many crops you want to start counting, if you include grass seed and everything else, but you know, with, with respect to the crops that I work on and vegetable seed, it's a, it's a huge industry, um, multi-millions of dollars worth. Um, it depends on how long, far down the chain you go, but, but the reason we have such a big industry in Washington State is the climatic requirements to produce seed are, are fairly unique, and not many states in the U.S. have those combinations of conditions that are needed to grow seed. That's why. To grow high-quality seed. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. You.